Hello everyone and welcome back to another YouTube video. Still looking at the Bandit War game from Over the Wire and uh, we just finished up level 19, or like now we are on level 19 and um, we're just jumping back in. I'm going to still use SSH Pass with uh, the file that we're using to keep the password that we've been collecting and um, SSHing with the correct user. So once we are in, we can see in our home directory a Bandit 20 do but it's all red and weird. So the prompt here says, uh, to gain access to the next level, use the set UID binary in the home directory. Execute it without arguments to find out how to use it, and the password for the level can be found in the usual place after you've used the set UID binary. So if you haven't seen a set UID binary before, you can read up on it, but the gist of it is, is that it lets you, within the scope of that program, or within the scope of just running that program, that binary, that executable, you get to act as another user. So if we check out the permissions on this, I'm going to ls tag l, you can see rws as part of the permissions, that s means it's a set UID binary. So it's owned by Bandit 20, however we are Bandit 19. So it's owned by the next level, so we can take advantage of it and exploit it, quote unquote, to get the password for Bandit 20. That's typically how most war, war games work, is that you have binaries or programs that will give you like temporary access for the user the, the user above the user you're currently in, or the next level, and then you just got to figure out a way to get it to spit out the password or let you into the next level. So let's try this Bandit do. It It is just executable. We see that it's marked with that that X bit, so we can use a period and a forward slash and dot slash the binary to run it. So I use tab to autocomplete, I hit enter, and it says run a command as another user. Example, bandit20 tech do ID. So ID, just to see what happens. Ah, so our unique, our, our, sorry, not unique, our user ID number is this, and we can tell we're bandit19. Our group ID number, Bennett 19, but our effective user ID, or our EUID, our effective user ID, is Bandit 20. So we are acting for the moment as Bandit 20. Now, if I ran this without that Bandit 20 do, if I just ran regular old ID command, that Bandit 20 is not in there. Because within the scope of that program, we're running a set UID binary and we can do whatever we want as that user. Especially if we can just run commands. Why not cat, etc. bandit pass? Oh, how about bandit 20? Um, why does that not work? Oh, it's because I spelled bandit wrong. No, I didn't. What the hell? What am I doing wrong? Did I, did I actually type something wrong there? What? Oh, 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 I'm sorry. Okay, after poking around a little bit, I, I figured out what the issue was. It's trying to run that whole thing as if it were a command, as if that argument were a command, but we need to have those not in quotes so that it will run everything tokenized and then cat the file out. Okay. I'm sorry, I was misreading, oh, permission denied, as in it's not there, but no such file directory, as in it's actually not there. Permission denied is just saying, oh, we don't have the permission to read it. Um, it was reading this entire string, you can see from the environment, it's not, a, it's not, it wasn't, it wasn't like a bash error, it's just like environment, this isn't a command you can run, so I realized, okay, you can't have, you can't have quotes in there. Peculiar thing to note, but password for bandit 20, good stuff. Let's keep moving. Now, let's try it one more time. Get to Bandit 20. All right, we're logged in. And what is this? Man, we are getting close to the end. Set UID binary in the home directory that does the following. It makes a connection to localhost on the port you specify as a command line argument. It then reads a line of text from the connection and compares it to the password in the previous level. 
If the password is correct, it will transmit the password for the next level. What? What? So SU connect. This program will connect to the given port on T on local port on local is using TCP. If it receives the correct so the next password is transmitted back. So, oh, so we need to have a connection just kind of listening, just kind of waiting to give it to, okay, waiting on itself to, okay. So we need two shells right now because one, we need to invoke SU connect to connect to ourself. Let's SSH bandit20 at bandit.labs.overthewire.org. Paste the password in. Did I not paste it? What's going on? Oh, I'm a fool. I realized I was not on the right port number. That's silly me. Alright, cool. Now we're jumped in. So, if we had a netcat listener, which you may not have uh, heard before, but let's put something on TAC L, listening on port 8888. Now, that's doing its own thing. Like, that is its own socket and servers, or server, or server service, whatever you want to call it, running on 8888 on this local host, on this, on this computer. Let's actually ensure that port is what we want with tag P, and let's use V to be verbose. So listening here, and if we were to make a connection up top with 8888, give it the port number that we are currently listening on, you can see it makes a connection. So connected here. So it wants to receive the correct password. It wants to receive the current password. So if we paste this in, send it, it says, great, that client read the password, matches what it was supposed to be, so it'll send the next one. And we can see back down here, we did get the password for Bandit21. Perfect. Does that make sense? We set up a, a shell, we set up another netcat listener to kind of act as a server so that it could send a connection to it on that port number that we've supplied because we're the one creating that service, creating that server. And then if we just give it the password that it expected, the input that it wanted, it would send us the password. Awesome. Let's get to Bandit21. Logged in. Program is running automatically at regular intervals from cron, the time-based job schedule. Look in etc. cron.d for the configuration and see what command is being executed. Ah, okay. So these are the commands we can check out. If uh, you haven't heard of cron before, it is just a task scheduler. It'll like run commands or run scripts at a specific time. And uh, you can run through all of the man pages if you really want to, but if uh, I guess I'm just going to have us jump in because cron is the program that runs all this stuff at a specific time. It will schedule a job or schedule a task. So you can modify these by using a cron tab editor, and that is done with cron tab tack E to edit. Okay. Permission denied. So I can't edit these because I'm not allowed to with whatever rights I have as the Bandit21 user. But as it said, we can check out the etc. cron tac d uh, folder in our file system and see what in that directory we can read. So let's actually get there. So I'm Bandit21 and I want the password for Bandit22. So let's check out what that file is. Ah, so on reboot, it runs this, and this syntax here, cron tabs have a, uh, here, I'll show you on my my host, cron tab tag E, uh, let's just use nano. You can specify a minute, hour, day of month, day of 
something, whatever, day of week, I don't know. <laughs> it doesn't really matter. You can go through the details of this, but it will let you specify at what interval you want this command to execute. So if they're using a star, they're doing every, that's the wildcard for every single occurrence. So in this case, up top, since they've specified it for every minute of every hour of every weekday, etc., etc., it's doing this every minute. So this is the command that it must be running as the Bandit22 user. So let's check out what that is. We can cat that file. Oh, it's putting a temporary file. Creating one, and it's catting out the password to the Bandit22 user into that temporary file. Well, if it's in temp, it's world readable, world writable, at least not world readable in this case, but we might be able to read that file. Let's check it out. Do we have permissions on that thing? We do. Everyone has permission to read it. So let's check it out. There is the password for Bandit22. All right. Let's note that one. And let's hurry up here. Let's see. What is that? Program is running automatically at regular intervals from cron, the time based job scheduler. So check out. Okay, the same directory we were in, the cron configuration. We see a cron job bandit 23. Let's uh, see what is in this. Okay, another script in user bin, just as the previous level was. Let's cut out what this is doing. So it has a shebang line. It's a running a bash script. It's trying to get the current user with who am I, storing it as a variable my name. It says my target is the output of echo I am my name, pipe to MD5 sum, cut tac D. Okay, so let's try and let's try and recreate this just to kind of get an idea of what it's doing. Who am I is the command to get your username, right? So we stored it in the variable my name. And if I use the dollar sign here, That'll expand the variable. They're using the dollar sign in parentheses to say that I'm doing command substitution, a lot like our backticks. That's another syntax for command substitution. So they're saying my target is all this stuff. What is now the my target variable? Okay. A hash, because this is echoing I am user bandit. 22 in this case, putting it into MD5 sum, and MD5 sum is taking just the hash. Okay. Bandit 22. Now we, you see we get the same hash because we are just doing that, and it's cutting out this hyphen at the end. They're just using cut tag D with the space, and they're getting the first field to get only that. But this isn't being run from the cron job as user bandit 22 it's being run as bandit 23 so this is being executed with my target using echo i am user bandit 23 we can make that change and now this must be the hash that we're actually going to be looking for because this script as we saw earlier takes all these variables and then it copies the password file to a temporary location with that variable. Okay, so can we cat out that file? No. Hmm. Okay. What's going wrong? Echo. I am user bandit. Ah! I wrote Bandit32. I'm a fool. At least that wasn't incredibly painful troubleshooting. <laughs> Thanks for sticking with me, guys. I'm sure you were screaming at your monitor the whole time. Great. Now we have the password for Bandit23. 
All right, let's save this and put this in a new file, but let's uh, table these for now, and we'll get back to the next level and finishing up Bandit in the next video. So thanks so much again for sticking with me, guys. Hope you're enjoying these. Thanks for tolerating my mistakes, and I'll see you in the next video.